Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining this evening's program. I'm your host this evening. My name is Luke Leiter Hill, and I'm coming from Israel. And in this highlight episode, number two, we're going to focus on stories of people that are making a difference and who give us inspiration and encouragement and to make those first steps. So really, for these next 40 minutes or so, we'll continue to spotlight stories from the Yumi region. This evening is that spotlight is our sister Cornelia and our brother Michael. Let's listen to their stories or activities and that they're making a difference in this region at this time. All of us, both those sharing the stories this evening and those who are joining us from the audience, you are doing important things. From exciting activities like the Peace Road to taking care of our families in the home. Each and every part of our lives is precious to our heavenly parent. So please, join us this evening as we're uh, listening and joining together and hearing these stories that can really encourage us in our lives. So, let us invite our sister Cornelia, she's the Vice President of the National Youth Council of Moldova, to share with us her story. Please welcome Cornelia with a round of applause. Cornelia, hi, welcome to the show. Welcome, thank you so much for joining us. It's wonderful, wonderful to have you joining us for this evening event. Uh, first of all, uh, those who are not familiar with you, uh, would you like to please introduce yourself, uh, who you are uh, and what your background is? Yes. I'm Renina Karabnowski, 22 years old. Uh, I'm from Moldova, it's a country located all southeastern Europe. I hope you know about Moldova. <laughs> um, I was born in a family of six children in uh, Taraklia village, this, uh, uh, consumer district. but now I live in the capital of Moldova, Kishinev, because I study here, I am not, uh, uh, most of the activity uh, have years. Um, uh -huh. I'll walk around, yes, I'm uh, science uh, 2020, I coordinate the organization YSP Moldova together with a small but a very good team. Uh, and I am student at the Medical University, uh, the General Medicine Faculty. I finished the fourth year. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really amazing. What a uh, amazing background you have You're coming from this uh, wonderful country. Moldova is uh, truly a beautiful country. I was there only once, uh, but I do wish to uh, go back and visit once again. Uh, so really thank you once again for joining us and uh, this evening we really want to uh, focus on uh, your uh, your uh, activity or participation and election uh, to the National Youth Council in Moldova uh, so really I want to ask how did you become a part of this National Youth Council and what is the National Youth Council? <coughs> The National Youth Council is uh, Moldova's associative structure of uh, 38 youth organizations which uh, promote the rights of young people and um, represent the interests of youth organizations in the process of developing, implementing and uh, evaluating uh, youth policies in Moldova. Uh, and um, uh, one of the uh, objective is to increase the number of youth people and leadership structure uh, to involve them in the um, uh, decision making process to form the, uh, the uh, civic spirit and uh, to promoting uh, volunteering. Um, how I um, become um, actually uh, so last year at the also general meeting after the vote, our organization was the Moldova. Uh, you become a member organizations of this uh, associative structure and you had uh, several uh, beautiful collaboration together. And uh, regarding the position of uh, vice president, 
uh, from uh, general meeting on uh, June uh, 4, 2022. Uh, it was fact a quick uh, decision with a little hope because they are uh, they were uh, good candidates. Uh, yeah, how was it? It uh, first you had to introduce yourself, then you have to say why we should be chosen, what changes we will make, and the um there you different questions from the organizations and uh, voting following um with the um, uh, participations of 21 organizations and uh, the majority voted me respectively and i uh, get it wow amazing so uh with that uh you were chosen so that means uh, you must have come forward with many good ideas and many different kind of policies that you wanted to drive through this uh, council. Uh, so uh, can you give us a little bit of a background on which policies you wanted to uh, push forward so that they uh, invited you to become this uh, vice president position? What I want to do in the future? Uh, yeah. Yeah, what what you want to what you want to do? Uh, uh, which which policies you want to uh, make uh, in 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 this position? Um, yeah, this question also was was in the um, process of uh, selecting the position of vice president. And first of all, I would um, strengthen the weaknesses of our structure because. Uh, uh, most of uh, these member organizations are not active or less active and they want to uh, exchange experience um, like uh, with uh, more experienced organizations and uh, choose less developing organizations. Have a harmonious collaboration between uh, organizations and uh, board members. Uh, another object will be uh, have all um, uh, to have collaboration with the National Youth Council from another country uh, to collaborate. And uh, yeah, I would also like to focus uh, on um, personal development projects because, yeah, you know, we start with us and change also. Um, yeah, and actually, uh, um, Tomorrow we will have an office meeting where we will talk uh, details about uh, our children and what uh, you can and uh, uh, what you will to change. Well, thank you so much for giving that kind of uh, overview on what you want to do. And, you know, you were saying that you want to create connections with other nations. Do you have other nations in mind when you want to uh, make this uh, connection with? Uh, do you have something in the background or is this uh, something that is just uh, kind of an idea? Connections uh, with other country or... Uh... Mm -hmm. um... Yes, uh, because like we are uh, international uh, organizations, USP, you have a connection with uh, another country, and uh, I think it's a good opportunity to uh, collaborate together. But yeah, uh, um, the National Youth Council of Moldova had like um, um, a collaboration with Youth Council of Moldova from Denmark. Yeah. And uh, I also can maybe uh, from European country, I need to collaborate. Yeah, I need to, to have an exchange uh, experience. Well, it sounds really interesting uh, with Denmark or other European nations. Uh, Denmark is also yeah, a very beautiful country. They have some good policies there. So I think this uh, joint uni union between these nations can work very well. And uh, what gave you the drive to want to be part of this uh, community or this committee? Yeah. 
для uh, as I said it was um, a bit of difficult decision because uh, I didn't know if I will succeed with all the responsibilities but the friends support me and said me that uh, to where you will succeed and uh, that I can't do it and yes as a decision point what uh, what um, what could I can be useful and uh, the positive influence on the higher level because I like this president is uh, uh, second position um, after uh, president. So do you find that uh, making this decision was hard, but does it affect also um, you know, your family life or the way that you're, you're living? You know, you're a student, you're just finishing uh, your degree, you know, you're coming into this uh, National Youth Council. Uh, does it affect uh, those around you uh, in any way, uh, in a positive way or negative way? Yeah, actually, I, uh, I recently received this position, but I can't say much about now and affects me or my life. But um, <clears throat> I can say uh, from my experience that as, as a uh, vice speed director, because I have uh, now because I have a uh, new responsibility at a center with a great influence, respectively, uh, less time I give uh, the, to my family. Um, yeah. I, you are a united family and sometimes we get uh, upset that I cannot participate in special family events. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, they understand what I do for the good of others and uh, help me in various things in uh, many projects also. Yeah. This. No, amazing. So yeah, thank you really. Uh, so much also for sharing that i really hope that uh, you know your family and friends can uh, support you at this time is an important change in in your life going forward and uh, you know this this role that you receive is it able to create uh, you know uh, something is there something special for you inside of this role is there something that really inspires you or uh, that you think will inspire others uh, or, or others who are looking to get into this kind of role, uh, what kind of advice would you give them uh, to, to, to make that a, a success or make that happen? Um, it, because it is, uh, it has a greater influence and respectively I think together uh, you can contribute to the voice of young people to be heard. And I feel that I can help, I can be useful in this position because uh, I like to inspire young people uh, to make positive changes, to look at some issues uh, globally and um, to understand what they are available and, and yeah, the youth can change uh, history. So how is, how is the situation of the youth in your nation? I mean, you're coming to make a change. Does that mean that they're in a bad situation or uh, they need help? Do they need help in, in development or uh, more social skills or more um, kind of uh, increasing their ability to, to get together or they're lacking places for, for communication uh, between the youth? Which kind of... Uh, a situation are your youth in at the moment in your nation? Yes, uh, youth uh, in uh, although you have many youth, uh, what is uh, very activity active, but um, uh, yes, um, uh, in uh, uh, this National Youth Council, also uh, many people are very talented, but they. Uh, don't have a uh, connection each other like it's not um, uh, uh, this harmonious between them and um, yeah I think it's uh, uh, 
it's a uh, point what I uh, what we uh, needed to work and uh, yes the, in uh, uh, actually um, the National Youth Council uh, had many um, projects uh, and uh, they uh, uh, did many um, uh, changes uh, with um, uh, to national um, uh, like to national place like uh, one project uh, what uh, they uh, um, did it was um, um, actually it, with uh, refugees activities and um, which took to place to OSP handcards it was a uh, source Ukraine, no host or country, support young um, recruiting in Ukraine. Uh, also had um, like uh, youth of Moldova for religious in the agenda of voluntary national review 2030. Yeah, and uh, National Youth Council of Moldova also had um, the partnership with UNFPA. UNICEF and uh, other famous also um, organizations. Yeah. Wow, amazing. It really sounds really amazing already. What you're doing there is great, but uh, I'm sure that your uh, involvement will bring this unity uh, between all of those council members and allow things to run more smoothly. Uh, so yeah, really thank you uh, so much. Uh, for uh, sharing with us uh, this evening. Uh, and with that, uh, I would like to say really thank you. I, I could learn a lot about uh, yourself, about your nation, about what this National Youth Council is doing. So really, uh, thank you uh, for sharing. Uh, and now uh, I would like uh, to invite uh, our uh, wonderful brother, uh, Nicola Hoog, he is the Vice President of Family Federation in the Central European region. I'm sure you're all very well aware of him and you know him very well. Uh, so please welcome him uh, with a round of applause. Thank you, Luke. Um, I remember uh, I first met Luke in Korea. We were in uh, Global Top Gun together. And the biggest thing I remember about him was that he got very, very sick <laughs> during the program, and it was so sad to see him because he was struggling to, you know, participate as much as he could. But he was, he had that that champion, that champion flu or whatever goes around there. So, um, that that uh, yeah, I feel that that heart towards whenever I see Luke is like, oh Luke, oh he had such a hard time there. Anyway, it's good to see you, nice and healthy and looking great, and and it's great to be here. Yeah, so um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's uh, Michael Lahog or Mickey. Uh, you can call me. I'm originally from New York City, but my wife is uh, German, uh, from Germany, and uh, I've lived here here for the past four years. I'm currently in Portugal with my family, uh, taking a little bit of a trip before the Peace Road, which I'm going to talk about. And um, yes, I've been growing out my beard since retiring. Um, and uh, so you can tell if I have a job, the beard will be gone. But until then, uh, I'll be um, in between in between jobs. So, um, yes, I want to introduce the, the Peace Road a little bit. Um, what it's going to be is a few day event that's happening um, July 25th to 28th. It's going to be in Berlin, hence Berlin Peace Road. And it's going to be. Uh, a great opportunity <clears throat> for all of us to get together to um, support Peace Road and a couple more things that I'll get into. Um, I have a few slides. Let me see if I can share these properly. There's some, uh, let's see. All right, so here it is. You can see here, this was updated July 2nd, that's today, because, um, you know, it's such a, uh, anytime we're working with uh, Korea, working with your parents, um, things are flexible, let's just put it that way. So this is the latest update, the hottest news uh, about 
uh, what's going to happen. Okay. Are you going to come, Luke? <laughs> I I wish I wish I could be there. You know that would be a, such an amazing uh, amazing time. I'm sure that we will have our representatives uh, from Israel there in Berlin with you guys. Um, and you know what gave you the idea to have the peace for in Berlin? You know. Yeah. Well, um, it wasn't my idea. I should put it that way. Um, but it uh, there's a, a long history of of why we're doing <coughs> peace road and why we want um everyone to join so um yeah actually um a few reasons so the first is that uh berlin was actually can you can you guys see the slides okay just one slide two parents okay um berlin was actually the last place in europe that uh, true father visited while he was still on this earth so this is uh, this is true parents at the Schladenberg Palace um, in 2011. And this is actually one place that you could visit um, if you if you came to the event uh, in a few weeks. So Berlin has that significance. Berlin was also, as I think hopefully everybody knows, we're not that young, um, that uh, Berlin was the location of a, a very big CARP event in uh, 1987. So this is the 35th anniversary of that event <clears throat> and at that event a young Hyojinim uh, spoke and this was just a few years before the Berlin Wall came down and there was actually a lot of um, struggle in order to get the event approved and the location was cancelled and then you know legal team had to be brought in but eventually it was a very successful event you can see I don't know if you can see Hyojinim there he's uh, kind of near the front uh, on the left side. Um, but this was a, a big event. And one thing that um, there's a kind of a highlight for for us um, having the event this time, one of the three reasons that um, we are encouraging everybody to join the event is that um, this will be um, the first public engagement that um, True Parents' grandchildren, so Hyojinim's children, specifically Shinchul, Shinhung, and Shinya, will be attending. So one of the big reasons why um, we're encouraging people to join, especially young people, is to meet and connect with uh, True Parents' grandchildren. Another big reason for the event and one of our hopes um, is that we as a generation uh, rise and raise our voices and take a stance as the youth of Europe for peace in Europe. If I haven't mentioned yet, yet the um, overarching theme of the whole Peace Road event here in Berlin um, is centered on the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict and also um, tying it together with Korea. So you may wonder, what does it have to do Korea with Korea? Um, you may, um, if you've seen the schedule yet, you may wonder why are we doing this event in the middle of the week? Um, well, there's a very important reason for that. And as you know, with our parents there, you know, uh, the unification of Korea is an important topic to them. Um, but actually, um, this day, uh, June 27th, July 27th, is the Korean War Armistice Day. So this is uh, the American delegation um, or the UN delegation uh, signing the Korean War Armistice um, 70 years ago. And um, that's why True Mother has asked us to do this event in Berlin um, on that specific date. Yeah. So um, Berlin also has the history of um, the reunification in um, the, the Berlin Wall falling in 89 and the reunification of West and East Germany. And um, yeah, so because of the reunification of West and East Germany, uh, Germany is a really great place to kind of set this example for reunification of of North and South Korea. Wow, really amazing, amazing, uh, <laughs> amazing reasons to join, you know, uh, I think I would definitely find myself joining there uh, if I could be there on the on the second then doesn't matter which date it is, you know, it's a perfect day uh, to join. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, really the question is, how can we really be involved? How can I be there? 
Yeah, so um, we have a pretty extensive schedule. Um, you know, one one thing that we as a youth, uh, Bogdan and the other vice presidents and myself, uh, and all of the, the youth leaders here in Europe who are involved at all with uh, the programming, um, we really wanted it to wanted to also make it an opportunity for all of the youth in Europe to come together and uh, join together and just meet up because it's been, you know, because of COVID, it's been so long since many of us have had any big workshops or met up with one another. So this um, is a great opportunity for us to just get together and bond. So we've also specifically into the schedule built in activities that um, facilitate that sort of bonding. So I will share a little bit of the logistics, a little bit of the, the specific details with you, if I can get this to work, okay. Yeah, so the package that we've created, um, overall the program consists of um, three days. Let's see if I can share this again. All right, so three days and the, the first part of the package is, okay, where are we going to stay when we're in Berlin? So um, what we've put together for the youth is uh, staying at a, a nice youth, youth hostel right in the center of Berlin. Um, and this location we will also be using for some of the events that we're going to be having, some of the get togethers. But imagine, you know, a hundred or more than a hundred young people staying at the same youth hostel in the center of Berlin. It's just a great opportunity for us to to get together, to see each other again, to spend time together. So that's that's where everything starts. So that will be um, the first day, Tuesday afternoon. You can arrive here, and then um, later in the afternoon we have a um, UPF and YSP peace forum. Um, so. YSP, sorry, spelling mistake there. Um, so the, the topic of this conference is going to be swords to plowshares. As you know, in the Bible, um, Isaiah talked about beating our swords to plowshares and turning our spears into pruning hooks. So we're going to be talking about uh, at that conference, um, North and South Korea, but also Ukraine and Russia, the conflict here in Europe. So there's going to be a sort of high level panel with um, the people that you would expect at these sorts of things like academicians and politicians, that sort of thing. And then there's going to be a youth um, session after that. So that's going to be specifically about the Peace Road and the Peace Highway. And that'll be Tuesday. And then we'll again, we'll have uh, we'll meet up at the youth hostel and have a little orientation there for the youth. And then the next day, uh, which is kind of the center of everything, will be the peace rally at the Brandenburg Gate. So that's going to be a, a great event. If you've ever been to to Berlin, you've probably seen the Brandenburg Gate. There's a big square there, um, and it's right near some embassies. And there's always some sort of political events uh, or rallies happening there. So we want to make our mark. Uh, we've got a couple of great flyers in design. Um, and the, the motto for the rally is no new walls in Europe. Don't let Ukraine become another Korea. So and that's really, you know, the situation. Nobody could expect or foresee that we were going to have another major war in Europe uh, in the 21st century. So we really want to kind of take from the, le the lessons that we've learned from Korea, especially us as the unification movement, um, very familiar with with that conflict and the results of that. Um, we want to take the lessons we've learned from there and uh, make sure that those are known for here in Europe. Yeah. After that rally, uh, we're going to have a march. So we're going to march about uh, one kilometer to the parliament building and have another um, sort of min mini rally there with one or two speakers. Um, it's very, very German to... Um, to march with signs and flags and things like that. So we want to we want to make our mark like that. Is that enough for you or do you want more? <laughs> if you have more, I'm ready to receive more, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that's that's only about half of, of what we have so far. Um, it's again, it's a really great event and we're putting a lot of work and effort into to planning it. Um, immediately after the March rally, there's going to be a bike tour. Now look at this. Um, this is a 15-kilometer bike tour that goes all around the center of Berlin. 
and actually visits all of these different embassies. All those different flags you see there are embassies that are all, along the route of the bike tour. So this is the, the Peace Road event and um, typical for the Peace Road is biking. So we have to include biking there. Now I will say, um, unfortunately, there's a certain limit to the number of spots that we have for the biking. And that's either almost completely filled or completely filled at this point. Um, but don't worry if you if you keep listening, uh, there's another opportunity to go biking. But this was a, a, a you know, great opportunity for people to see Berlin and also for us to take that Peace Road message onto the road um, and to all these different embassies. And um, after that, if that wasn't enough for you, we have two boat cruises that are planned. So not only are we uh, going to hit the actual road on bikes, but we're going to hit the, the waterways as well with two different boat cruises. And depending on if you're in the, uh, if you go on the bike tour, you have to take the second boat cruise and we will be encouraging you to say, take the second boat, boat cruise together. Um, so this is a, another great opportunity to see Berlin from the water. So that is the, the second day of our three days. You want to know what's happening on day three? Of course. Wow, it's going to be Perfect. packed. I'm sure everyone yeah, is very it, excited for this, you know? Wow. Yeah, it is. Um, it's a lot going on. A lot of prep work is going into this. And, um, you know, a lot of people are putting a lot of time into making this a really great event for, for everybody, but specifically for the youth as well. Um, so, um, the, on, on Thursday, which is the third day, um, we are going to start off the day with a, a morning prayer. And this is going to be at the, uh, war memorial. So we, we as youth can then go there and pray for peace, um, and be a good example for the desire to, um, to have peace in our countries. Um, and then there's going to be three or more different options for day tours that people can join. So one is to Wittenburg. That's uh, the city where Martin Luther um, hammered his 95 thesis on the church door. So, you know, an opportunity to see there and connect to uh, that his, uh, religious history. Um, and then uh, the second option is to go to uh, Potsdam, which is where the uh, Prussian and then German um, rulers lived. So that the picture that you saw um, of true parents that was in Potsdam, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that'll be a great opportunity. I went there when I visited Berlin and we had a tour, a couple hour tour, and there's really great stories and very interesting to see um, kind of that typical, you know, European palace uh, area. And then the third option, um, if you can take part in the cycling on the second day, because it's already full, the third option is to do a tour in Berlin. So depending on who signs up for that and what they're most interested in, um, that tour can be either bicycling or walking, and it could be centered on Cold War history or um, World War II history or um, religious things. So th there are different options for uh, for that tour in Berlin. Also visiting the Berlin Wall is, is certainly an option. Um, and sorry, I got a question um, related to the, the not being able to bike on the second day. What can we do in the meantime? So uh, during that time, we encourage people to, to see some of Berlin, to meet up with friends, uh, get something to eat. Uh, it's only for about two hours. So there are different things that, that you can do. Um, you could also, um, if you're really adventurous, you can try to find a, a free bike, one of those public bikes, uh, and just tag along with the, the official biking tour. Um, but uh, you, you have to do that on your own risk. I heard some of the bikes, the public bikes are not the, the greatest, but uh, that's an option as well. Okay, and then um, back to day three. Um, after the, the day tours, we as the youth are going to end off with a really great opportunity to bond one last time and um, also to spend more time with the true grandchildren. Uh, we're going to meet up at the, the youth hostel and um, we're going to have a bit of a barbecue. Let me share. This is a picture of the actual barbecue we're going to have. Um, no, there's just some stock footage. Um, but uh, you can also see there uh, the true grandchildren. So uh, the three, uh, the three to the left there are the ones that are going to be 
uh, with us in Berlin. So we're going to have a barbecue gathering with them. Um, we're going to have some great food. We're going to have music by Intune, the band here in Germany. Uh, and we're going to, you know, just be able to spend some time together and close off the, the three days uh, with a bang, uh, maybe some fire pit grilling. Uh, we'll see. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is now that I'm talking about the true grandchildren again, um, they are also going to be attending some of the different events. Um, I think probably the UPF uh, and YSP conference on the first day, and then um, at least one of them will be speaking uh, and or singing at the Brandenburg Gate, so the main rally kicking off Peace Road 2022. Yeah, so a lot of uh, important things going on, a lot of significance to this event. Yeah, um, let's see. Any, any other questions? I think I think that's you know amazing. You know, is uh, going around first by bike, then by boat. You know, soon it will be by air. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> really there's... reigniting, reigniting that spirit. You know, that that yeah. spirit of peace. You know, thirty five years ago, also you know, marching in there to take down the Berlin Wall, the spirit of the people behind, and uh, you know, finally creating that kind of spiritual condition for the wall to fall. So I, I really pray that this can also set that kind of condition and that also this, this dreadful war can come to an end and that every, every side can come out, hopefully, uh, less, less hurt and less, less damaged, but uh, mm -hmm. create that new, new revival of the youth inside of Europe. Yeah. So thank you yeah. so much. Um, sorry, I did get a couple of uh, other uh, direct oh, yes. questions. So I'm, I'm just going to jump in here and answer some of these. And feel free to shoot these uh, my way if you have any more questions. Um, one thing I didn't mention was um, actually the this Peace Road here in Berlin. Um, it started off um, not small, but let's say um, of less monumentous, um, you know, with less monumentous meaning. Uh, it was simply a Peace Road event. And then your mother said, OK, this Peace Road event here in Berlin is kicking off all of the Peace Road activities, the official start for all of the Peace Road activities in the world for 2022. So, you know, usually that happens in Korea, but your mother wanted it to happen in Berlin this time. And then um, the other really significant um, kind of um, change that was made by your mother is she announced that the Berlin Wall uh, or the Berlin Peace Road event was going to be the first official event of True Father's 10-year Songhua anniversary. So, uh, okay, yeah, uh, True Father's 10-year Songhua anniversary. Um, so, again, that's usually something that happens in Korea with something in the stadium, some big uh, inauguration, probably some musical or something like that. But uh, this time, True Father's Songhua anniversary and the 10-year one um, is officially starting off in Berlin. So. Um, really, we really want to encourage everybody to come here and attend uh, in the same way you would want to attend um, if you're an event happening in Korea. And if you can't attend, we encourage um, you to support those in your in your community that may be interested in attending. Um, okay, some other questions. How does registration work? So um, we have a registration form um, and I'm putting the, the link right there. So um, you can click on that link and you can register. Um, this is a special, uh, yes, Bogdan also dropped the information sheet. This is the special youth package. So one thing I didn't talk about um, is the cost. So uh, the cost for the three day event, so it's three nights, so four days, um, leaving on Friday, arriving on Tuesday. For the four day event, which includes staying at the youth hostel for three nights and that has breakfast as well the youth session on Tuesday, uh, the peace rally on Wednesday, the boat trip on Wednesday, which also comes with coffee and cake, and you get a t-shirt as well for the whole event. And then the youth gathering on Thursday, e or yes, Thursday evening, which has food and all that. Um, the price for, for youth, the standard fee is 170 euros, which I don't know about you, uh, but if you've, um, if you've, looked at staying at an Airbnb or, or anything in any major city nowadays, especially in a city like Berlin, which has a lot of Ukrainian refugees. I heard that the housing situation is pretty tight. Um, 
staying anywhere for three nights for 170 euros, that alone would be be cheap uh, without all the extra stuff like the events. So it's a really great um, opportunity. And luckily, we've gotten some um, some sponsorship and some support um, to make this happen for the youth. Not only is it only 170 euros as a standard price, but if you're a student, um, it's actually even reduced to 120 euros. Uh, and if you're from this, the Middle East or Eastern European subregions, because of the distance and traveling uh, and economic situations, the price is only 90 euros. So um, really, it's like, uh, you know, if you told that to anybody, if you told that to anybody on the street, hey, do you want to go to Berlin and spend three days there uh, for 90 or 120 or 170 euros with events included, um, you know, people would jump at that. So I, I, we really hope that that um, our young people can feel um, the effort and, uh, you know, dedication we're putting into making this a great event for them. And um, all of you here, we encourage you to um, share share these links that we put in here, which is uh, the registration form and uh, information, um, and really encourage uh, your friends to attend. Yes. Uh, and then, sorry, I'm going <laughs> to... Keep talking here. Uh, I got one more question. Um, so is this more about getting together and spending some good time together? Yeah, so that's actually one of the three you know, main reasons that we think young people would want to come is to, um, to meet each other and spend time together. But again, we don't want to forget um, the importance of, you know, just like all those young people who, who gathered uh, with Hyojunim 35 years ago, um, you know, the, the Berlin Wall didn't fall down the next day, but it fell down within two years. And I don't think people really, ex anybody really expected that to happen. So, you know, on a, <clears throat> from our understanding, um, we could certainly say that there was a spiritual background for that happening. So in the same way, we as a youth here in Europe, we want to set that kind of spiritual foundation, that spiritual activity um, to help support the end of uh, the war that's going on in Ukraine right now. Yes. Sorry, I kind of just took over there. But uh, if you have any more questions, uh, yeah, go ahead. Feel free to, to ask. Yeah, really, thank you so much. You already answered many, many questions and uh, really, no, very, very insightful. Uh, and, you know, you would be daft not to go for 90 or 120 or 170 euros. You know, this is like... Uh, I can also vouch. It's a very reasonable price, yeah. um, especially with all of the things that are going on. I can only say thank you to the Patreons who are supporting this event because they must be supporting quite well. Uh, so yeah, thank you uh, once again for sharing all of these uh, details and about the event. And just like you, know, you said, all the details are also will be found in these links below. So please share them. Uh, with all of your uh, loved ones or people that you think might be interested uh, in joining, especially uh, the youth. Uh, so yeah, it would be good to, to get that out there. So yeah, thank you once again uh, for joining. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's give a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thanks, Luke. So yeah, with that uh, out of the way and really, really, really igniting my my uh, feeling for peace, let's let's do that. The peace road is really uh, something that is uh, amazing, and uh, you guys are really making uh, such an amazing effort uh, to be able to involve everyone uh, in this uh, event. Uh, and so I'd like to now uh, invite our uh, EULE uh, president, uh, vice president uh, Bogdan uh, Palmer uh, to give Hi. us more information about providential events. Hi. No, more information from me. Hi, great to see everyone. Oh. It's Thank you, Cornelia, for, for sharing your story. Next time, I hope to hear how you joined. I, I'm sure there's also some interesting stuff there. And thank you, Mickey, for giving us such a great, great update on, on the Peace Road event. And, as you, and thank you, Luke, for, Luke, for hosting it, despite last minute... It's always with the tech guys that the tech plays up, right? So that's, and plays its tricks on. So that's, that's also fascinating. Anyway, so, and thank you for everyone here. Thank you for joining. Um, so if you have, as you can see, we're still 
playing a bit around with the format of the highlights talk. We'll keep doing it every, every first Saturday of the month in the evening. We'll have the clips made available on, on our HJ Youth Academy YouTube channel. And so please feel free to share them. And of course, also about the Peace Road. It's, yeah, we finally, I'm sorry that it took so long, but finally we have the package package together and nothing nothing blocking us now from join from joining hopefully and from making that effort yeah exactly so so far we have kind of 67 people in the youth category signed up but we want to reach at least 120 so let's let's share let's share the news and bring it out and one important question is can i bring a friend who is a not a unificationist and the answer is yes it's even better for them so yeah with with that i think that that's the news that's just what i wanted to share at the end we are again over time we'll be working on that i promise and i think there's now some more time to chat in the yeah right we'll have breakout rooms luke is that correct uh, so uh, so far as I'm aware, yes, we're having <laughs> breakout rooms. So I hope you're all ready to share uh, with one another uh, your inspirations from uh, this evening's talk. Uh, breakout room closing. Um, when I was sorry, I'll just finish up what I was sharing. Um, there is uh, there's an opportunity to come to Berlin early, and we're still fleshing out some details. So if anybody's really interested in coming a couple days early and laying some spiritual foundation and also spending some more time um, with uh, Hyojinim's daughter. And she will also be coming starting on, uh, I think, the 13th. So there's an opportunity there to get some extra timing with uh, true grandchildren, if you'd like. Sorry for hijacking the closing of the meeting, but I'll turn it back over to, to Luke. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, so, thank you so much. It would be nice to spend some time also with uh, the true grandchildren. So yeah, thank you for sharing uh, this important point. So thank you everyone for joining. Uh, like Bob Jim said, we're still working on uh, the process and how things will be done. And, uh, you know, uh, sorry for once again also going over time. Uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully in the future, all of these things can be ironed out and everything can be nice and, and straight and clear. Uh, so yeah, thank you once again, everyone for joining. Have a wonderful evening, uh, and I'm sure we'll see you all again uh, in the next episode, episode number three, coming soon. Bye-bye.